Hey, how's it going, friends? Thank you for tuning in to VR Revelations. Welcome. Please make sure you give this video a like and make sure you subscribe for future coverage. So let's jump right into it. So it looks like tensions are really high right now, uh, as I'm going to show you here on the map around this area right here, which is known as uh, Transnistria, right? Now, this little area here is near Moldova, as you can see here. And I think a couple of weeks ago, the Prime Minister of Moldova, which was a woman, uh, resigned her position and it pretty much caused a governmental collapse, a collapse of government. Um, and, you know, she said that some of the reasons were the all the tensions right now and uh, the pressures that the government was facing, especially things concerning the uh, ongoing war in Ukraine between, obviously, Russia and Ukraine, um, which is causing a lot of power outages uh, in Moldova. Um, they have other crises, like economic crises. And so, yeah, things are not looking good in Moldova, but as you can see here, this area is known as Transnistria, this red area. And all this is under the control of the Russians. Now... Of course, there's already uh, tensions there um, since Moldova is, you know, has taken a stance against Russia. Um, and with Russian troops there, right, so close to them, uh, you know, you, you, can, uh, you can probably guess that tensions were already high in this area. But now with the war, you know, things are escalating really quickly. And now... As you can see here, um, all this red area over here, this is where uh, the front lines, pretty the front lines of the conflict right now. Uh, this is what Russia has uh, taken, um, and all of these little like bomb uh, symbols here is just where the action is taking place. And again, um, Transnistria is right over here, and so. Uh, Russia is now accusing Ukraine of trying to pretty much launch a false flag attack uh, against Russian forces here in Transnistria. And so as we're going to read in this article here from War News 24-7, you'll see that uh, the Russians are essentially saying that Ukraine is planning to have troops along the border. Uh, don't know exactly where. Um dress up like Russian soldiers. So uh, Russia is saying that Ukraine is going to have these Ukrainian soldiers dress up as Russian soldier, soldiers and then go uh, into Transnistria um, to, attack, uh, uh, to attack Ukrainians. Uh, and so I guess what, you know, that would achieve for Ukraine would be to uh, maybe try to get Moldova to join the conflict here. Um, and then try and take this uh, territory here of Transnistria and sort of cause uh, a loss for Russia. Although, you know, it wouldn't really change what's going on in the east over here as Russia is advancing. Um, you know, this could just be them trying to take, uh, you know, what they can get. And so they might think that a victory here would sort of look look good for the international community who really aren't seeing any results uh, for all the billions of dollars that uh, they have provided Ukraine in order to arm itself and help it in a war against, uh, in the war against Russia. And so, because they are losing uh, battle after battle along the front lines, even though they want to claim that they're inflicting a lot of casualties on Russia, uh, you know, they have to get a victory, and so, you know, what... What better place uh, to do that right now than Transnistria over here, right? Because it's isolated and Russia is focusing a lot of their forces on the front line. So, um, you know, depending on how uh, uh, intelligent you want to consider the Ukrainian leadership, they could be uh, planning to maybe distract Russian forces from key areas right now, uh, such as Bakhmut and Volodar. Um, but... Uh, yeah, that's open to interpretation, um, but I don't really think that would achieve, uh, uh, you know, any strategic value for them. Um, although, of course, it's always valuable to destroy opposing 
the opposing force, right? Um, at least their number in men in, in manpower. Um, but yeah, it definitely looks like things are uh, heating up in this area here. So uh, I could definitely see Russia sending troops out there and then sort of making an incursion into this uh, whole area down here towards the south, uh, you know, south of Ukraine. And so, um, yeah, this could open up an unforeseen uh, front here for uh, Russia, right? Or, um, you know, a development of the conflict in an area where, you know, people weren't necessarily expecting. Uh, but again, um, it's it's definitely going to lead up to something because there's just too much chaos going on in Moldova right now. And, uh, you know, it's a good opportunity for the Ukrainians to uh, muster up a victory there. Um, and again, this could distract the Russian forces, but uh, I don't think it will. Uh, on the contrary, I think Russia will just, you know, escalate things and it would only uh, accelerate th their advancement, right? If, if they know they, they're going to be attacked over here in this area. Um, but anyway, so let's actually read a little bit about Moldova from uh, this article um, from Le Monde, I believe it's pronounced. Correct me if I'm wrong. So it says, Moldova gets new pro-European uh, pro prime minister after government collapses. So this is just a little bit of background. Moldovan President Maya Zandu has nominated her pro-European security advisor, Doran uh, Rishin, for prime minister after Natalia Gravrilita resigned, triggering the government's collapse. Moldova's pro-European president, Mai Zandu, on Friday, February 10, nominated a new prime minister after the current one resigned and triggered the government's collapse in the struggling Eastern European country. Zandu's choice, her pro-European security advisor, Doran Rishian, is likely to be approved without hurdles in the country of 2.6 million people, nestled between Romania and Ukraine. The new government will be formed promptly and will lead the country on the path of reconstruction, Zandu said in a televised statement. We need unity to get through this tough time we are going through. The impoverished country, which was granted EU candidate status in June 2022, faces multiple crises, or crises including energy blackouts since Moscow invaded neighboring Ukraine, so those are the power outages I was talking about. On Thursday, Moldova's intelligence service said Russia was acting to destabilize the ex-Soviet country following comments by Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky that Kyiv has uncovered a plan by Moscow. So Kyiv, uh, Zelensky came out and said that, you know, he uncovered some plans for um, Russia essentially... Uh, I mean, that the Russians were drawing up uh, to try and pretty much take control of Moldova down here. And so, uh, as we're reading there, according to the article, uh, Moldova actually then went ahead and accused Russia of trying to destabilize uh, the country. And so, um, you can see that, you know, there is an anti-Russian sentiment in Moldova. Uh, so it says, Natalia Gravilita, 45, who is from the same pro-European PAS party as Sandu, announced her resignation as premier earlier Friday. She didn't elaborate on her reasons for resigning, only citing a lack of support and trust at home. Sandu thanked Gravi Gravilita for her sacrifice and huge efforts in leading the country through so many crises. The PAS party has 63 seats in a 101-seat parliament, so voting through Rishian, a 48-year-old former interior minister, as new prime minister is seen as a smooth process. The country suffered energy blackouts after Ukraine stopped exporting electricity because of Russian airstrikes on critical infrastructure. While Russia's giant Gazprom cut gas deliveries by half last year, according to Chizanu, at the same time, Moldova's intelligence agencies have accused Russia of attempting to destabilize the country and its pro-European trajectory, including through paid anti-government protests. Again, 
All these accusations that are taking place here, uh, you see how they're accusing each other of trying to meddle in society and through propaganda, uh, you know, trying to influence uh, the government there, right? So that it can line, line up with their own government, with their own ideology um, and their own interest. So it's pretty much what happened during the whole Cold War. Uh, all these battles between the U.S. and Russia, um, you know, for for uh, through these proxy states, rather, right? Such as in Vietnam, right? Or the Korean Wars, where you had the U.S. supporting one side, providing weapons, uh, you know, to that side. And then you had Russia. At, at times you had Russia and China, you know, supporting the communist cause. And so they would, you know, create chaos in all these other countries and what are known as proxy wars because, you know, they're not facing each other directly. And, yeah, we live in the modern age, right? We have uh, social media, uh, you know, this technology, cell phones, laptops. So we're much more aware to all of that. Um, but at the same time, it's, it's a continuation of the Cold War, uh, except now in Ukraine, you actually have one of those superpowers directly involved. So, you know, at this point, it's kind of like, you know, when Caesar crossed the Rubicon, you know, the die is cast, there's no turning back. Um, Russia and China keep talking about this uh, multipolar world. Uh, but yeah, the, everything that is going on here, like, in Moldova, it's just these two sides, right, trying to influence the government. And as you can see, Moldova uh, has already been been influenced um, to the American way, much like uh, Ukraine was, right, when the U.S. started meddling there. So, anyways, let's go ahead and read a little bit from this 24-7 uh, article here. So you can see they are reporting towards general ignition in Moldova. Russian forces are being reinforced in Transnistria, Moscow. Intensive preparations for the invasion of Ukraine. Second midnight announcement by the Russian Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Units of the Russian army, army stationed in Crimea are on heightened alert following the second announcement by the country's Ministry of Defense, which speaks of preparation for an invasion of Ukrainian forces in Transnistria. Within the next few hours, Russia will have to start strengthening its forces in Transnistria if it does not want to face unpleasant developments. It remains to be seen how this will be achieved. Earlier, the Russian Defense Ministry stressed that Kyiv was preparing a provocation according to which fighters dressed in Russian military uniforms would enter Transnistria from the territory of Ukraine as Russian troops and then attack Ukrainian forces. And again, as I said, guys, if we look at the map, you know, if uh, if Ukraine were to do that, I believe one of the objectives would be to draw Moldova uh, into the war, right? And, and thereby helping Ukraine to take control of Transnist uh, Transnistria here, right? And sort of giving a giving uh, Ukraine a morale booster, not only through the support of Moldova here, um, but also of a, a, a military victory, uh, if that were to be the case there. But, you know, I, I'm sure the Russians could easily strike and deploy troops there uh, to that area if, if Ukraine were to actually uh, try to agitate the situation there. And again, it could escalate things all over more than uh, they already are faster, rather. Uh, but yeah, let's read a little bit more here. Um, so, Russia intelligence re uh, records the accumulation not only of personnel of the armed forces of Ukraine, but also of military equipment near the border with Transnistria. There's deployment of Ukrainian artillery units in firing positions. At the same time, the Russian Ministry of Defense records an unprecedented increase in the flights of unmanned aircraft of the armed forces of Ukraine on the territory of Transnistria. So those could be uh, drones. Yeah, unmanned aircraft. Yeah. 
According to the second announcement of the Russian Ministry of Defense, Ukraine is preparing an invasion of Transnistria. Uh, it specifically mentions the Kiev regime has intensified preparations for an invasion of the Moldovan Republic of Transnistria. As mentioned earlier, this action of the armed forces of Ukraine will be carried out in response to the alleged attack of Russian troops from the territory of Transnistria. The, impl the implementation of the planned provocation by the Ukrainian authorities is a direct threat to the Russian peacekeeping force legally deployed in Transnistria. The armed forces of the Russian Federation will adequately respond to the imminent provocation of the Ukrainian side, the Ministry of Defense stressed. The Russian Deputy Foreign Minister emphasized that the situation in Transnistria had escalated significantly. He also added that Moldova has cut off all communications with Transnistria at the behest of the West and NATO. In other words, the U.S. So again, guys, the U.S. is added again. And again, I'm not choosing sides, right? This is what mankind has done throughout all the ages. This is all just, you know, politics, right? And politics eventually lead to war. And so we are currently at this point, except, again, the only big difference now is that, you know, we're not talking about wars between men who have swords and spears. Um, but, uh, and, and even more, guns and, and grenades or missiles. We're now talking about a nuclear conflict, okay? We're talking about these nuclear superpowers. That's what makes our day and age so much more different and consequential uh, than any other point in human history. And, of course, I, I don't think that's any, uh, any accident. Um, I think uh, that, you know, everything happening right now is... According to biblical prophecy, right, I believe that everything now is taking place in order uh, that the prophecies in the Bible uh, can be fulfilled. Because, of course, the Bible states that all of God's word must come to pass. Uh, all the promises are true. And so, you know, people have always thought, you know, the world was going to end possibly when they were alive. But again, the only difference now is that we actually are talking about, uh, you know, a world ending conflict here, nuclear war. And so, you know, things are definitely uh, boiling up to that point. But I don't think that, you know, if, if it gets to that point, I don't think the U.S. and uh, NATO are going to be willing to enter into that nuclear uh, exchange over uh, Ukraine, but you're, that's not going to stop the United States from meddling, right? You know, if, if they're already here, if they already have the advantage because they're causing all of this right on Russia's border, then why wouldn't they continue to support this no matter what country uh, the conflict is taking place uh, across the sea? I mean, the U.S. is over here. As long as they don't get attacked directly, on their land, uh, you know, they're not going to be willing to, to risk the whole world ending over any other country um, uh, besides an actual direct, direct attack on the United States. And that's my personal opinion. But again, since we know that we have these proxy wars, right, uh, you can't blame the U.S. for, you know, seeking their own interests, right? Um, now, you can have arguments about the morality of what is going on, and that's definitely something that people argue much. You know, I myself could take part in that conversation, but I'm not going to because this video is already running on 20 minutes. Uh, but again, my stance is, you know, I, I'm a believer in the scriptures. Uh, I'm a Christian. I know that uh, there will come a point uh, in time where, you know, there will be an end to this world order according to the scripture, right? Uh, that says all governments have to pass away, right? All governments have to be wiped away from this planet because they are all corrupt. 
and then according to the Bible, God will establish a kingdom where you know you won't have corruption or evil uh, or all these uh, terrible things that we see take place throughout the world. So you can't really, um, you know, justify either nation. Uh, but you know, the U.S. is definitely winning if we were to look. Uh, at the spheres of influence, I mean, the fact that the U.S. is literally causing all of this right on Russia's uh, uh, border just shows you just how much uh, uh, ability the United States has in these matters, and I would definitely say they are the best. Again, just look at what they are causing in this area. All because, you know, they are trying to win Ukraine over to their interests, to their ideologies, to their way of life. Um, and again, you've seen this throughout history, but now they they actually got Russia involved. And so Russia is now, you know, Russia can turn back away from this now. And so I think this is going to end very uh, badly for Ukraine. And I think it's going to end very badly for uh, Moldova here. And if the Ukrainians do attack here, I think that uh, this thing is going to escalate. Um, and, uh, yeah, we'll have to keep keep an eye out on Moldova uh, to see if they are, you know, going to actually decide to support Ukraine directly and, you know, get in there in the trenches and fight along the Ukrainians. Now, that would be some pretty incredible news because then you could have Belarus... Uh, using that as a justification to, uh, you know, enter the war formally here alongside Russia. Um, although there's rumors that that could happen here uh, in the near future. But anyways, guys, um, while all that is going on in Moldova, we see uh, that uh, Bakhmut right here, the, uh, the place that everyone is keeping an eye on right now uh, is pretty much being swallowed up by the Russian advance as you can see here and uh, pretty soon here they're going to take control of Bakhmut and Chiziz Yar um, it's only a, a matter of uh, a matter of days now so I'll definitely be keeping an eye out on that uh, but anyways that's going to be it for this video guys remember the truth is stranger than fiction Anyways, thank you for tuning in. Have a wonderful day and God bless.